everybody, this is Ben with devslopes.com. And in this video, we are going to set up a couple more utilities to prepare our game to move into the capture scene. So let's jump on in and get through those so we can move on with our game. The first utility that we're going to make is going to be a script to hold constants. So let's right click on utilities, create C sharp script. And we're just going to name this pocket droids constants. And we're going to want to name it that to avoid any conflicts with existing Unity files. So let's double click on that to open it up in our IDE. And we're going to take out this mono behavior. And we're just going to make this a public static class. And all this is going to contain are constants that we want available for easy use across the board, such as scene names. And right now we've only got one scene, so let's go ahead and store that. We're going to say, I don't know what a perliv is, but let's say public static string. And then in all caps, we're going to write scene underscore world equals. And then we just want to type in to represent the scene we currently have, which is called world. And then while we're here, we're going to go ahead and create one for our next scene that we'll create as well. So we're going to put in scene capture equals capture. And for now, we're done in this file. So let's save that and go back to Unity. And the next utility class we want to create is going to be a C Sharp script. So right click utilities and create new script. And we're going to call this pocket droids scene manager. Again, to avoid naming conflict with the Unity scene management scene manager. So double click that to open that script. And we're going to make this an abstract class meaning it in and of itself is not instantiated, but it's more of a template for child classes. And as of right now, we're just going to have two functions that this implements, which may seem silly, but I'll tell you why in just a second. Better yet, I will show you why. So first, let's create this function called public abstract void player tapped, and we're going to pass in a game object player and then public abstract void droid tapped game object droid. And for now, we're good on this script. So let's save that and go back to Unity. And now we want to right click on the world directory under our scenes. And we're going to create another script. And we will call this world scene manager. And let's double click and I'll show you why we wanted to create that scene manager class. We will go ahead and inherit from pocket droid scene manager rather than mono behavior. And I'm going to cheat and just implement the missing members. There we go. And let's get rid of these exception messages because I, I don't want those. Now, the reason that we wanted this pocket droid scene manager class is because we wanted a common interface to interact with for our droid and player classes. So Say, for example, with the droid. If we tap on a droid in our world scene, then obviously we want to attempt to capture that droid, right? So one would think we take the droid class and in that function called on mouse down in our droid class, we move to the scene to capture it. Well, what happens if we try to capture it inside of the capture scene? Do we go try to capture it again? No, that would that would cause a lot of problems. But we want the droid to be able to tell us, hey, somebody tapped me. And then when we receive that message, we want to handle it according to whatever scene we're in so that we can handle it the best way possible and do exactly what we intend to do. So here from the world scene manager, what we would want to do is move scenes. So we would say scene manager dot load scene. And we are going to load up our pocket droid constants dot scene underscore capture. We're going to save and then we're going to switch back to Unity and we want to make sure that we are using our world scene manager. So we will drag it onto our main camera. Just like that. And as you can see, we now have the world scene manager script on here. The last thing we want to do to get ourselves set up here is we want to go to the droid script. So double click that and head into it. If you remember, we've got our on mouse down function. Well, now is its time to shine. So all we need to do in this function is go and see if the currently active scene contains a pocket droid scene manager. 
And there are lots of ways we can do this, but the easiest is going to be say pocket droid scene manager array managers equals find objects of type. And we pass in the type pocket droid scene manager, and then we just say managers dot for each. And then for each of the pocket droid scene managers that it finds, we just say if pocket droids scene manager dot name object dot active self then pocket droid scene manager dot droid tapped and we just need to pass in this dot game object of course and then we just save now let's go check out unity and one last thing we need to go and fix before we can move on is we need to answer a question and that question is how are we going to keep data persistent, at least in terms of the droid? Because right now, when one scene is loaded, the other is destroyed. So the best way to do that is typically through having some kind of class or script that saves that data, holds onto it, and makes it available between scenes. Lucky for us, we already have one set up. We just need to make an adjustment. So if you open up your droid factory script, we are just going to update a couple of things here. Underneath all these serialized fields, we are going to make a private list of type droid, and we're just going to name that live droids equals new list of type droid. And then we need one more private variable, and this is going to be of type droid, and we're going to name this selected droid, and we're going to leave that null for the time being. And we'll need a couple of getters for these. So let's say live droids with a capital L and then selected droid with a capital S. And we're most of the way there. If we come down to our instantiate droid function, we just need to say live droids dot add and then wrap that around this instantiation call. And what that'll do for us is as it instantiates it on the field, it will go ahead and add a reference to that object inside of our script. And then we just need to add a public function, public droid was selected. And we are going to pass in a droid and we're gonna call that droid. And it would help if I assigned a type. So we're gonna say void. And all we're gonna do here is say selected droid equals droid. And now we have a public function that when our droid is selected, we can tell the factory, hey, we just picked a droid. So say, for example, we needed to copy a droid across scenes. We'd have that available and ready to go, which is exactly what we're going for. Now, the only problem with the script as it stands is when we swap scenes, all of these droids in here that we have a reference to are going to die. So we need to add one thing, but lucky for us, again, super easy fix. It's almost like it's by design. We're gonna switch back over to Unity and we are gonna open up the droid class. And all we need to do here is go ahead and say, start, don't destroy on load. And then I'm just gonna say this. So let's head back over to Unity real quick. And that's all we need to do to be set up to move on. So let's go ahead and come up to collab. And we're going to say set up for scene 